talk to us about um, democracy in a comparative analysis with what you have in the US and what you've seen happening in Nigeria. Does it give you a sense that perhaps um, uh, we're still a nascent democracy or we could have done things a little, more, a little bit better? Well, I think, you know, democracy is not perfect in any country. And whether it's the United States or Nigeria or our other de democratic friends around the world who've had elections recently, um, I think that the uh, democracy in many ways is, is messy, you know, and Churchill often would say that, you know, democracy is uh, in kind of the, what was his phrase, like the least worst uh, form of government, you know, that it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but it is a manifestation of how citizens can channel their views through a representative democracy uh, into policies that govern their lives. So I think that you know, it's a, it, it thrives on a contest of ideas and uh, a wrestling over policy questions of resources and rights and um, how um, resources are expended and invested in communities. So I think in many ways that will always be a difficult process because those are difficult issues. And in a context in a world where so many families and communities struggle to improve their lives and create uh, a better life for their children, you know, people get very passionate about that and it's understandable. So I think it's understandable the frustrations that many people feel in a context of, of poverty and trying to improve the lives for their children, the next generation. It's understandable people would be frustrated. My point, and I think our point, is that frustration should be channeled democratically peacefully, without hate speech, and without efforts to demonize people. Might just add another point that at a time like this, Nigeria needs more than ever its moral leaders, its faith leaders, its traditional leaders to come out and speak for these principles and to speak unambiguously, no to hate speech, yes for unity, yes for democratic discussions, and no to violence. I think that's a corpus of what strengthens a democracy and I think those are critical messages that we need to hear from, from pastors, from imams, from traditional leaders. I've been encouraged that I do hear those messages from some of those leaders, but I think we need it to be even louder and more, more enthusiastic because it's, uh, it's just so critical for the future of Nigeria. Electoral, uh, we're going through a phase at the moment and uh, trying to uh, bring in the mix or if not totally moving to an uh, electronic voting system mm. in Nigeria. You have that in place in the U.S. already. How, uh, what's the contrast, would you say, having looked at the, uh, uh, the voter machines that we're using now and what's obtained in the U.S.? Can we better, for instance, say, the uh, registration process or the um, uh, accreditation process in Nigeria when it comes to election day? What's your views towards making it better? You know, it's interesting. In the U.S. experience right now, we have uh, the, actually our federal system empowers the states to have different voting procedures in terms of how votes are counted. And in some communities, there are still old style, you know, pull the lever kind of uh, ballot. Uh, not everywhere in the U.S. has electronic voting right now. So it's very interesting that it's different in different communities. I do agree that these technological advances strengthen the, uh, the accuracy uh, of vote counting, um, and that's a very, very important thing. I think one of the things, to be honest, that we also wrestle with in, in our global world where we're so reliant on technology is ultimately security of digital information. Right. You know, cybersecurity is a critical, critical issue, and that's something we in the U.S. are very focused on now because of some of these cyber attacks or, you know, uh, um, interference in, uh, you know, in our elections, which is something that's been very much discussed. Oh. I think the importance of the sanctity of the ballot is critical, and all of us in this technological digital age need to work together to improve those procedures, to have safeguards and checks. Uh, but I think, you know, technology uh, creates incredible opportunities and great potential, but it also creates its own new challenges that we need to um, look to incorporate in our electoral mm -hmm. system. Well, would you say that uh, uh, for developing countries who think that democracy is quite expensive, what should they do? Well, it may be quite expensive in some ways, but it's... A presidential uh, system, in fact. Yeah. 
Well, it, it's, quite, it's quite important, though. And I think that, you know, Nigeria and the United States have a lot in common with our systems of government, you know, our federal systems, the power of the states, the balance with the center, uh, the federal government itself, uh, you know, the presidential elections, uh, the terms that are four years. Um, you know, we have the tradition of a president will serve two full terms uh -huh. and then, you know, like President Obama, they are required to retire from, yeah. poli from presidential politics. Um, so I think we have a lot in common and a lot of experiences. And, you know, we in the United States can learn from Nigeria, too. There's a lot of things that we're not a perfect country. And I think that, um, you know, in the context that we're in with our vociferous debates in mm -hmm. the United States, uh, I think some of the things that I'm sharing with you from our experience are also things we need to think about in our own experience. Do you, do you support um, devolution of powers? Um, I think that in the Nigerian context, these are decisions for Nigerians to make. Um, I don't want to get in a situation where I'm um, talking about prescriptions for how Nigerian citizens and through their government officials should decide. I do think, just in a very general political science uh, term, I would say that the distribution of power throughout government in, in different ways I think it's in general a positive thing. And again, your federal system enshrines that because you have some powers for the states and some powers for the federal government, some powers for local governments. And I think in our experience in the states, for example, we have uh, school boards and administration of schools is done locally. You know, some expenses on health care and health care programs and other things are done on a state level. And then on a federal level, you may have a focus on foreign policy, security policy, but also broad, you know, outlines of how policy is set for education and health and environment and other things. So I think we, in our American experience, practice a devolution of powers or a separation of powers uh, through different levels of government. And that's something that's worked for us in a lot of ways. You've also been through uh, different parts of the Niger Delta. You've talked about how uh, internationals need to be a little more responsible in terms of how they handle uh, their businesses there. Are you, uh, have you seen any kind of change or improvement that you'd like to see? I think that it's very, you know, it's very important that international companies that are working with Nigeria on uh, harvesting the great uh, mineral wealth, the resources of the petroleum industry, are very important, very important development partners. I think, you know, at the same time, it's very important that local communities, uh, state governments, the federal government, uh, engage in a process of uh, working together uh, to making sure that environmental conditions are appropriate, that, um, you know, cleanup efforts go forward. Uh, I think that's very important. And we found in the United States that, you know, our big uh, companies that are uh, extracting resources need to work through corporate social responsibility and engagement with their communities to guarantee uh, an impact that's positive in the community in terms of jobs, in terms of development, in terms of environmental engagement. So I think that process of engagement uh, as partners mm -hmm. for development is very important. What's your final words um, with respect to restructuring? I would come back to the basic principles I mentioned. I think we in the United States government are strongly committed to Nigeria's unity. So any discussions about this, we feel, really need to be focused in terms of national unity. It needs to be based on a democratic process of dialogue. And again, importantly, at this moment uh, in Nigeria's history and politics, no to violence, no to hate speech. Fine place to live it. Ambassador David Young, Charge of Affairs, U.S. Embassy. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. All right. And we'll be back in a moment. Don't go away.